Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 116 tonight. Uh, Psalm 116. And there's an outline at the back if you haven't picked one of those up and want to follow along with us. Tonight I want to talk to you about God's deliverance. God's deliverance. And, you know, I know there's probably people that wouldn't agree with me on this, but I want to say in my mind, and, and I feel like in Scripture, God always delivers us. Okay? It may not be what we want, okay? But I'm just telling you, and part of that is God has a solution to every problem in life. Okay, every problem in life. Uh, and I think the biggest problem we have as Christians, even Christians, is we don't like, there's a four-letter word called W-A-I-T, wait. And that's not what the lesson's about, but I'm just trying to get you to thinking like I want you to think. Uh, he has the solution, but sometimes we won't wait for it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and that's, that's just free. I, I, that's not my introduction or anything. All right. Uh, number one, God hears our prayers. Aren't you glad God hears our prayers? I am telling you, I never have figured out, even as a kid, I was wondering if all the Christians and, or even half the Christians in the world prayed at the same time, how does God hear that? But he is God. Okay. He can do things that we can't do. And we're going to be talking about heaven this week. And I, even in studying already, the three days that I've studied, uh, I, I just can't fathom what he heaven's going to be like, all right? Because we associate everything with earth, but God hears our prayers. Number two, God feels your pain. He feels your pain. Jesus, while on earth, felt our pain, okay? He, he, uh, I, always, I always go to where the woman uh, with the issue of blood came and touched him in a huge crowd, and he knew something, you know, that virtue, that power, that Holy Spirit, you know, uh, went out of him. But God feels your pain. Number one, God sets you free. Folks, do you realize we don't have to be in bondage? We really don't. We are free. We are free. Uh, God's deliverance, Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. One thing I picked up on reading this psalm, uh, I, me, and my is used 30 times in 19 verses. And it almost seems like, uh, the, you know, the writer is, you know, just watching out for himself. But I believe it, it's showing uh, it's a personal thing. The writer here has been in times of trouble. The, the, the writer here was needing God's uh, deliverance. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. And prayer is calling on him. Another thing I noticed in studying this uh, earlier this week was that call upon him, call upon him is used four times. And, and you know this, folks, I cannot emphasize to you the importance of prayer the importance of prayer uh it is just so so important and by the way i've i've been kicking this around for a while and uh gary mentioned something to me tonight and it's it spurned again uh what i've been talking about tony we have talked about this too and uh we're gonna in in the in the future weeks we're gonna change up wednesday night a little i want to make it a three-part thing uh, because we say Bible study and prayer meeting, we go over the prayer list, but we need to be praying also. So I am going. We're going to try this. Uh, I'll do twenty minutes, and not next week. All right. I, I want more time to to ponder it, but uh, it it is coming up, uh, and we're going to have twenty minutes of Bible study, twenty minutes of prayer, uh, going over the prayer list, and twenty minutes of prayer time, and at that time we'll, you know, get in groups, all right? And we don't need, you know, groups of eight to ten. You know, I'm thinking somewhere between four to six people, or even if it's just four, all right? I am going to let y'all decide who, who we pray with, and we'll, we'll use that as prayer time. If you don't 
feel comfortable praying, that would be fine. Okay? But, but I just really feel like, uh, uh, and like I said, Tony uh, kind of heads our prayer uh, ministry out, and we've been talking about this also. So prayer is important. Look at verse 3. And the pains of death surrounded me, and the pains of Shiloh uh, laid hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. And folks, there is trouble and sorrow, trials, tribulation, problems, all these things. Uh, but we as Christians should look at things in different ways. All right, there are so many songs that, and hymns that have to do with prayer. I love one of the sweet old hymns called Sweet Hour of Prayer. Okay? And, and we just need to realize, uh, you know, when we pray, God listens. We get the attention of God when we, when we pray. He hears what we say, and he can, he can hear and sense our, our voice, and he can hear and sense, you know, uh, our sincerity and genuineness in prayer. And, I, you know, even as a pastor, uh, there are times that, you know, it's, it's not that I don't pray every day because I do, but I'm probably sometimes uh, not as intense in prayer as I should be, uh, sometimes I'm not as focused in prayer as I should be. And folks, it's so, so important. Man, there are family problems. There's problems at work. There are financial problems. There's problems with kids or problems with grandkids. There's all these problems, but God truly hears our prayer. And another thing about praying, there's no such thing as a hopeless situation. All right? Even... You know, when, when we get doctor's reports, okay, and, you know, I, I've heard doctors say, you know, there's nothing else we can do. But I've also heard doctors say two or three days later, I can't explain what happened. And when I'm in the hospital and I'm with a family, I never let that go by. I said, I can explain it. It was prayer. And so prayer, folks, is so important and to know he hears our prayers is very important i found trouble and sorrow then i called on the name of the lord oh lord i implore implore you deliver my soul and you think about this uh, when i was looking at it for the third time today uh you know I, I do it monday tuesday wednesday looking at it the thing that popped up in my head today when it said, implore, uh, implore you, deliver my soul. Remember when Peter and the disciples uh, were, were you know, on the lake and Peter was the only one, because we tend to criticize Peter, but he was the only one that got out of the boat because it showed his faith, okay? And, and so he took his eyes off of Jesus and began to sink. And what was the phrase he used? Phrase he used Lord, save me. Do you realize that's what happened when you got saved? All right, you were sinking in sin, in sin, and the Lord saved you. And also, folks, he's still in the saving business. When there are situations in life, folks, there are many situations in life that we have no control over, none. And it happens, but yet we can still go to the Lord in prayer. That is just so, so important. Hold your finger there and go to Psalms chapter 4. Psalm 4. Psalm 4 says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me from my distress. You want to get rid of some stress in your life? Spend more time in prayer. Because see, God made us where we can't think two thoughts at once. If you've got one thought going, the other one, I mean, another one can come in, but it doesn't have to, you know, knock, the, knock that thought out. And my point is, when I am praying, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be praying under stress or distress, okay? Prayer is just giving God your heart. Prayer is just voicing God your concerns. And, and he's here saying, you have relieved uh, me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. 
How long, O sons of men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehoods? Folks, we've all been uh, lied on. We've all been tested in our faith. We've all been hurt, okay? And there are, folks, there are people that hurt us, and I think sometimes the hardest part of that, people who are close to us hurt us. Family members, friends. And instead of getting in on the game of he said, she said, and all that, if you, we could just turn it over to the Lord, if we could just ask with the right attitude, God, I, I am not going to worry about this. I am not going to stress about this. God, I know you will defend me. In prayer, I, again, I just cannot tell you enough. Uh, you know, uh, there are many times that I literally pray myself to sleep. And I know what you're thinking. Pray yourself to, you know, what did you do, get bored? No, if, if, you, if you're praying and you're releasing these things to God and you're saying, I'm giving this to you, God, I'm telling you there is a peace that overcomes you. And you just go to sleep and realize that tomorrow's another day, all right? I, I can't solve this problem tonight. And that's a lot of people's problems, folks. All right, they're still in their mind trying to solve problems of the day. Give it to the Lord in prayer. Verse three, but know <clears throat> that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Another part of Psalm says, be still and know that I am God. And you realize part of prayer is listening to God? If we do all the talking, we're not doing any listening. And we need to spend time after we pray listening to God, not just telling Him all these things, not just listing, you know, our prayer list, which is prayer lists are fine. But there are times that God speaks to us and tries to get us to understand, here's what you can do. But if we just cut it off and, and we stop praying, if we don't, the, the word here, and people get a little nervous on this word, meditating, okay? You know, and it's not the humming and trying to reach the spirit world. Hey, I can reach the spirit world through the Holy Spirit. We need to get the right spirit, okay? But simply taking time to listen. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up your light and your countenance upon us. And folks, I can look at people. I saw a person today, and I, I, I just, I could tell this person is troubled. Okay, just troubled. And our countenance, see, God sees beyond what, you know, what, what we see. And when it talks about our countenance, that, that's that peace that God gives us through prayer, okay? And, and again, I, I'm not one of these that I, I am up. I mean, most of the time I am up, okay? I, I, you know, hot, you know, just ready to go, positive. And it's not just positive thinking. I don't want to say that. But, but there are times Satan uses those things against us, folks, we need to pray. And you have put gladness in my heart more than the season that their grain and wine increased. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. What is he talking about in verse 7? He's talking about blessings of God. The blessings of God is what he's saying. And in prayer, and I guarantee you if you do this before you go to bed tonight, you stop and you write down your problems. Then you write down your blessings those blessings will far outweigh the problems. I will both lie down in peace and sleep, for you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. So, God hears our prayers. God delivers us. The second thing I want you to see is God feels your pain. Verse 5, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. 
Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Gracious is our Lord. God is merciful. When we think about God feeling our pain, hold your finger there and go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I love these three verses. I mean, I love the whole Bible, but these three are, are really a blessing to us. Hebrews 4, 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest, and folks, Jesus is our high priest. I, 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 I don't pray to man. I pray to God. Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of God. Jesus hears our every prayers also. Who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. And do you know what Satan loves to do? He loves to make us doubt. Doubt the power of God. Doubt the timing of God. Doubt whether this situation is ever going to be able uh, to turn around. All right, we need to hold fast to our confession, to our faith, is what he's talking about. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, all right, talking about Jesus, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Yet without sin. And folks, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, was tempted. I mean, he even started out his ministry. You know, when you, when you think of the three temptations that Satan uh, put in front of him. But each time, each time he read or, or he quoted Scripture. Folks, that's why it's so important. And I just want to, I know I've said it a million times, but we need to start the day in the Word of God, and we need to end our day in the Word of God. We need to have Scriptures memorized. So that when Satan comes at us, we can start quoting scriptures. And another thing that I do a lot of times, uh, you know, when I'm having trouble sleeping or I wake up, and, you know, like the troubling dream that I had the other night, I, I, if I don't go right back to sleep, I start singing songs. Now, I don't sing them out loud because I'm telling you, Lori would whack me with the pillow. All right. She likes her sleep. But I'm simply saying, in my heart and in my mind, I can see, see, sing these songs. And not only can I pray myself back to sleep, I can literally sing myself back to sleep. Jesus. Now, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might attain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Folks, we, we have a helper and that helper is Jesus Christ. We have a helper, and that helper is the Holy Spirit. So God hears our prayers, and you know He feels our pain, and you know, uh, really, you know, in in some really hard, hard situations, only God can take our pain away. You know, I I think one of the hardest things is losing a loved one. I. Again, I can't imagine losing a child or even losing a, a grandchild. All right, I, I just, I have not went through that personally. Lori and I have not went through that. And even in ministry, uh, it is hard. It's, 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 it's a hard thing to do. And you even feel like as a minister, sometimes you don't have the words to say. But God can heal our pain. God hurts with us. Jesus is there with us, okay? And we need to realize Satan tries to steal our peace, and he tries to steal our rest. He really does. And we, we must realize that God is there even when we are in pain. Uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 7, and lest I should be exalted above all measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan buffeted me, lest I be exalted above measure. You know, it's kind of like uh, Satan when he was talking about Job. He basically told God, you know, if you take your hand off of Job, he'll curse you. 
If you just allow me to do what I want to do, he'll curse you. And thankfully, you know, we all know what he said. Naked I came into this world, and naked I'm going out. He lost many things, children, land, cattle, and all that. But yet, he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And Paul, I I don't care how, I mean, I, I count Paul as a spiritual man. I mean, he's one of the greatest soul winners, one of the greatest church planners, one of the greatest missionaries, and one of the greatest preachers that ever walked the face of this earth. And Paul is saying, hey, I'm not exempt. Paul didn't live in a bubble. Man, they got after him. He was persecuted a lot. Matter of fact, you know, he he has a list of things. Man, I've been in deep water, okay? I've I've been in beatings. You know, I've been beat with rods. And he just goes down through the list of the things. But he didn't quit. He didn't give up. God delivered him. The Philippian jailer, okay? They beat those guys, and they were singing hymns of praise with, with their bleeding on their backs and probably their legs. So I'm saying God cares. He knows your pain. He knows where you are. He ministers to our souls. And I can't imagine, again, this is something I've never went through, being a prisoner of war. Folks, I'm telling you, we owe those men gratitude and thankfulness. They paid the price. Okay, they literally, with their bodies and with their minds and with our hearts, defended our freedom. And we need to understand, no matter how bad things get, God has not forgotten us. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it may, might depart from me. So you would think Paul, you know, being the spiritual man, I, I, I just call him a spiritual giant. Okay, he's, he was a spiritual giant, wrote one-third of the New Testament. You would think, you know, God, you know, would, would just answer his prayers. And Paul, and again, you know, there's some speculation on what this was, but I truly believe it was he was going blind. And folks, I, I can't imagine going blind. I've always been able to see. Now, i got to have glasses <laughs> on my driver's license. It, it says if he's driving, he needs glasses. But I can't imagine going blind, all right? And, but yet it says, and, and it says, verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And I tell you, the mistake that we make in praying when we are hurting is we try to fix it on our own. And as a parent and a grandparent, I have learned this already you can't, I, I can't fix everything. I can't change how people feel. I can't change what people do. And there are all kinds of family situations where you just have to give it to God. You have to say, God, I can't, I can't control this. I can't change this. But I know a man who can. And that is Jesus Christ and God himself. And notice what it says, that my strength is made perfect in weaknesses. Folks, there's just time where all we have is prayer. We sometimes just get beat down. We sometimes just get physically tired. We sometimes get spiritually, you know, to, to just, just feel like that we're weak. But when we are weak, folks, that's when God does his best work. His best work. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of God may rest on me. Oh, folks, there's power. I love the the song, there's power in the blood. But there's power in prayer. Don't make prayer your last thing you do. Make prayer the first thing you do. The first thing. And it says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. Folks, I'm just telling you, if you live to be 80 years old, that is considered a good life. When you look at 80 years compared to all of eternity, it's it's like going on vacation. I mean, heaven heaven is going to be a perfect place, folks. We've got all eternity, and we're not going to have to rest up because we get the glorified bodies. The song pops in my head, it will be worth it all when we 
see Jesus. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Folks, we, we grow strong through prayer. We go strong through depending on God. We, go, we become strong by letting God take over the situation. He can fix it. Verse 8, for you have delivered my soul from death. Again, it, it could be salvation, and you, you have to understand, you know, if we are not part of the rapture and we live long enough, we will die the first death, but we will not die the second death. My eyes from tears. This is what God delivers us from. And again, there's nothing wrong with crying, all right? But he just simply saying, uh, you know, even, even the Scripture says he, he knows our tears. He knows every drop that falls from our eyes. My feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. Folks, faith is the key to moving mountains, to seeing prayers answered, to being a testimony for others. And I've heard people make this statement. You know, when, when somebody's going through the valleys or just something crazy happens and they're just, just saying, hey, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm not going to let this get me down. And they'll say, how can you feel that way? How, how can you, you know, most people be falling apart right now. Folks, it is the Lord. It is, it is God. It's that peace that passes all understanding. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. And again, I, I believe that Satan himself trying to get us, uh, you know, to, to get us down, to discourage us. Because when you think about it, all men are not liars, folks. All right? And, and there are people around us that want to tell us how bad things are. Or, you, know, I, you know, I even heard of people saying, well, man, what, what did you do to God? I mean, Job's friend said that. Job's wife said, you know what you need to do? You need to curse God and die. Now, that's not good advice, ladies. All right? There are, and what I'm saying is, Satan will try to beat you down and beat you down and beat you down. Don't let him do it. Go to the Word. Go to Scripture. Verse 12, what shall I render unto the Lord? For all his benefits towards me, I will take up the cup of salvation I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, that's the third time I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And again, that is just giving God. Folks, I mean, he does want your tithe and offerings, but he wants you first. He wants you. And number three, God will set you free. I love this. Precious in the sight of God is the death of his saint. Death isn't an accident. I know we use the word accident, but death isn't an accident. It's an appointment. The Bible says it is appointed unto man, wants to die, and then after that, the judgment. So, you know, you know when you see a saint die, when you see somebody that loved the Lord, when you see somebody that just walked with God, you know, for me, uh, that is graduation day. O oh Lord, I am truly your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosened my bonds. All right, and we are, you think about it, we are strapped down. Our bodies are strapped down. Our pains and our aches, all right, you know, we're getting older and, you know, we can't do the things that we did. Uh, last night I did something that I had not done in 16 months, and that was mow my front yard. And I had to stop twice. I stopped twice. But I just thank God. I mean, even in my illness, even there's times that I did not understand. There were times that I thought I was literally going to die because I was having trouble breathing. My pulse ox got down to 73 at one time. And I'm just telling you, all the, all the way, I, I, I would sometimes get down, but, you know, God would just keep encouraging me and saying, man, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. For a year, it went on. And, and you know, God, he has his way. It's his timing. I don't, I don't know. I kind of think, and, and I thought about this in the last, really, I thought about it when we were on vacation. 
Maybe God knocked me down for a year for that last push in the ministry. Maybe He has prepared me, you know, for this, this what I call, uh, Paul, we call it the back nine in golf. Maybe that was my point there where, where he just said, man, you run down, you've done this, you, you need to get going. I, I truly thought about that uh, when I was on vacation. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the uh, Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, and for time, well, let's, let's go ahead. I think we can get this in. Verse 50, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay, we're not going in there like we are. We would mess it up, folks. Nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Are you not looking forward to that change? Are you not looking forward to heaven? Are you not looking forward to no temptation, no sorrow, no crying? In a moment, in the twinkling of eye, eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. We were changed at salvation and we will be changed before we go to heaven for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And folks, you know, we, we sometimes, even as spiritual men and women, we let the flesh dictate how we feel, okay? How we feel. So when this corrupt, corruption, corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. Folks, we win. <laughs> We win, no matter what happens to us. And that's why I say God delivers us. Even in death, we win. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, we have all eternity to rest up. We have all eternity to rejoice we have all eternity to worship. We have all eternity, uh, you know, with our God and Jesus. Therefore, here's our advice. My beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Bible says if we give even a cold cup of water in Jesus' name, it will be acknowledged. Father, I thank you that you can deliver us you will deliver us and god we have the victory and i know sometimes our mortal bodies and our mortal minds and our old nature sometimes we just get down we think life is you know a, a lake and we're drowning sometimes we get tired of troubles and it seems like and and i have i've learned to say what else not to say what else could happen. But God, I thank you that you're there with us. I thank you that we can pray to you. God, I thank you that you're, you're just there, Lord. Your, your strength, even in our weakest moments, God, your strength is there. And I thank you for Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So God, I pray that we would be testimonies of people around us. I pray that we would uh, be the prayer warriors that you want us to be. God, I pray that you would just help us to encourage others who are down and encourage others who are going through situations that are tough. God, we need to hurt when people are hurting. We need to rejoice when people are rejoicing, but we also need to cry with people who are crying. God, I pray that people in our lives could see the love of Jesus Christ in us. And God, I pray, Lord, that we would understand that, God, when it's all said and done, God, we are going to be with you forever and ever and ever. God, thank you for that promise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.